Praise and worship team. Please be seated. Please be seated. Welcome, 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 church family. I'm so glad that a lot of you all are here. It's a four day weekend. You never know uh, what you're going to get. I might preach to myself, maybe a couple people, and my family, they don't want to hear me preach. They hear me enough. Amen. Amen. Happy uh, Remembrance Day. I learned, I learned something new this weekend. I was a uh, not this weekend, but Thursday. I was at Sansbury, and I'm getting ready to walk in. I think that maybe Sansbury is filled, so they have a little line waiting outside. And um, due to Armistice Day, they took two minutes, and they just had a little time of, of quietness and reflection. And if you don't mind, I just on this Remembrance Day, I know a lot of things are going on in the UK as far as, you know, this Remembrance Day of veterans, those that have served. So we're going to take just a couple seconds real quick just to, um, in remembrance. Amen. I'm going to you to pray with me as we get started. Father, we thank you for, you said, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Father, I thank you that you continue to fill our hearts and our minds on today with your word. Thank you for filling us with your spirit through praise and worship, Lord God. Father, I pray, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Father, I pray that you empower me to speak your word boldly and in truth and let our hearts and minds be open so that we can grow and mature in you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Church, we continue our, our church series, The Fruit of the Spirit, and I want to encourage you that uh, maybe you've missed some of the different fruits of the Spirit, um, that you go back and listen to those sermons. They are, I mean, they're great. They are sermons that you can grow thereby. And today we're going to talk about self-control. And self-control is one of those things that I would say is easier said than done. Amen. It's one of those things that I can preach to you about self-control. But every single one of us has something in our lives that we can control a lot better. So we are all in it today. And the scripture for today comes from Proverbs 25 and 28. And that scripture reads, a person without self-control is like a city with broken down walls. The title of my sermon today is The Territory of Your Heart. The Territory of Your Heart. In biblical days, walls was a sign of your defense. It was a sign of protection. It was defined who you are. Walls were structures that, structures, excuse me, that protected you. They provided security. They represented a place of shelter, forming a sense of belonging and boundaries and safety. Walls protected against invaders. Walls protected against intruders. Walls were a sign of protection. And the Bible says that Jerusalem was surrounded by walls and that there were watchmen on the walls that they could look out and see and watch out for destruction, watch out and see if people were trying to invade and come. Walls determine your spirit and who you are on the inside. The danger of losing one's walls was that anything can get out and anything could get in. The thing is, church, what has access to you? What has access to you because you haven't built the walls of self-control? And I'm going to take my time because I think this is something that each and every single one of us, if we just pause for a little bit and think about what our the vulnerabilities in our life. In the military, it is easy to see that what are the vulnerabilities? What are the things that the enemy, you know, whether it's insider threats or outsider threats, those things that are, we are vulnerable to as a military. But what about as a Christian? What are those vulnerabilities? What are those things that have easy access? And if you think about it, it's in your temptations. Where are your temptations at? If you understand what are those things are temptations, I would say that is where your vulnerability is. That is the place where God wants you to build the walls 
of self-control. Because if we refuse to say that, you know what, I'm free to do whatever I want to. That means that any and everything has access to you. Any and everything has access to your heart. Any and everything has access to your heart, your mind, your emotions. That's what controls you. Think about it, church. Say if you're, you haven't been delivered and I don't care if you're in the, the UK or you're in the States, whatever. If somebody decides that they want to ride up real close to you, right? Usually there's some kind of, there's something that, I mean, I feel it in my heart, okay? Um, there's something that goes on on the inside, right? Not for everybody. And I understand that everybody doesn't have that vulnerability. Some people, they ride up, a lot of people just be like, hey, God, God bless you. You know, I hope you get there in time. But that's not everybody's vulnerability, right? Maybe somebody is rude to you. Maybe someone, you know, calls you something besides a child of God. And maybe you want to cuss them out, right? Well, let's, let's, we're going to have church today, okay? We're going to have real church today. And I can't believe that this is being recorded. Brother, you might have to edit some of the things out. But this is the church, right? If we can't talk about our vulnerabilities, if we can't talk about those real temptations in our life, where else? How can we help each other out if we try to fake it? How can God really try to help us if we're trying to put on this fake thing like, you know what? Everything is OK. Well, it's not OK. How can I get help? I get it. My help comes from the Lord. I can pretend all this. But what about in my vulnerable spots? What about when I face failure? What about when the Bible says a righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up? We hear that, but the part of failing, the part of being down on the ground is who's going to help me up? Who can trust me in that part when I fail? Who's going to, who, who can help when the vulnerabilities, the temptations of life come in like a flood? And the Bible says the spirit will lift up a standard. But what about when I'm in, I'm in that dark place? What about when I'm in that place of fear, doubt, where I thought, God, you was going to show up and you have not shown up? Who do I talk to about those? That self-control church. We're talking about self-control and the vulnerabilities of life. And you may think that, you know what? I used to have self-control. I used to be everything was good. How did I suffer? How did these vulnerabilities come in? How did all this come in? How did am I struggling with all these different things? And I would say that it's sometimes it's just life. If you look at your biggest fight that you just had, if you look at your biggest frustration, if you look at, you know what, it could be the death of a loved one. God, I thought you was going to save this person. God, I thought that you was going to touch them and heal them. And you find yourself angry at God. I would say that's where the wall went down. That's where the vulnerability is. And every single one of us is susceptible to temptation. If you look at Matthew chapter four and two, you look at Jesus when he was tempted, right? The Bible says 40 days and 40 nights he went without food and he was hungry. Sometimes in church we try to over spiritualize it like Jesus was the son of God. He can't be tempted. He overcame all these different things. And the Bible said that he was hungry. That means that he had a natural need. He had a natural vulnerability, but even though he had this vulnerability, he knew that the only way that he could make it through was a spiritual response. Church, we're gonna have, we always will have natural needs, natural needs. We might have some emotional needs. We're going to have all these different things. But if you want to overcome, if you want to build the walls of self-control, it takes a spiritual response. A spiritual response. The enemy knows that if he can get you all to get in our flesh, right? That's, that's, that is That is easy. That is, I mean, yes, too easy. And if we admit that as, man, it is so, like I said before, easier said than done, but it's worth it. 
If you look at the military, we go through all types, all types of training. Those that are coming enlisted, you go through basic military training, then you go to tech school, then you get your job, and then you got on-the-job training, then you might go to some additional training. There is all kinds of different training that you get. Well, for godliness, you have training every single day. The Bible says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. I mean, there are some things that you have to work on every single day. We talked about the car, but I don't know what your vulnerability is. I don't know what that issue, I don't know what that thing is in your life. But the thing is with God is it's not going to disappear. We can think that, you know what, God, I just wish that this thing would go away. But there is something that you're going to have to face. There is a struggle that you're going to have to face and say that, God, you know what? I have this anger problem. God, I have this lust problem. God, I have this emotional problem. Whatever it is, you have to address it. You have to find the scriptures. You have to say that, you know what? I do have this anger problem. But how can I overcome it? Through love. Through patience through self-control. You can rebuild those walls, church, and you have to rebuild the walls, but it takes you. It takes you in your own spiritual journey, in your own spiritual war. The Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows, excuse me, the issues of life. You have to guard your heart. I can't guard your heart. Your spouse can't guard your heart. Your friend can't guard your heart. You have to guard your own heart. If you decide you're not going to guard the heart, if you decide that, you know what, I'm going to take a post somewhere else. I'm going to be on this side. You have let everything have access to you. If you decide that you're not going to guard your heart, who's going to guard it? I remember back in basic training, we had we had door guards. Door guards, is that right? Somebody help me out. Door guards, right? Their job was to prevent people from having unauthorized access. It doesn't matter if the T.I. is outside banging on the door, kicking the door, yelling at him, telling him he's going to kick his butt or whatever. He should not let him in. Back in my days, he had to show the ID and he had to look at the ID and look and, and, and do all that. You'd be scared and everything else. But he prevented access. You stand at the door. It doesn't matter how much someone ridicules you. It doesn't matter if somebody lies on you. It doesn't matter if someone does whatever to you. You stand at the door. You guard your response to that. It's your reaction. What you decide to let in and what you decide to let out. It's up to every single one of you. It's up to to me to guard my heart with all diligence. The Bible says out of it flow the issues of life. All those issues that you have in your life, maybe it's a guarding problem. Maybe it's you refuse to stand watch. Maybe it's you refuse to stay at your post and stand at your post. You know what, God? I'm going to stay right here in prayer. I'm going to stay right here in scripture. And there are so many distractions, church. My God. You can pick up your phone. You can pick up faith. I mean, people can send you text messages. People can send different things to you. There's so many things that vie for our attention. It's so easy to become distracted from the things that are of Christ. I mean, it's hard. It's difficult. But it's worth it, church. And if we're not careful, if we refuse to build those walls of self-control, we just allow everything to become accessible to us. It's interesting that even as a church, even as Christians, it's hard to say that, you know what? I don't go to this place. Nope. I don't do this because I decide that I'm going to set myself apart for the work of Christ. It's a foreign thing. It's a hard thing to say, not only in this culture. It can be hard sometimes in the military. Let's be honest. Say, you know what? I, I, I'm not going to I'm not going to I'm not going to play that game. I have to stick by own, my own integrity. I have to stick by stick by my own principles. I have to stick by my own values. And that's what self-control does. I'm a guard my heart. I'm a guard my heart that even when I'm offended, I'm going to choose love. I'm going to choose forgiveness. 
I'm going to choose that, you know what, even if somebody offended me, I'm going to walk and see how I can love them with my my heart. It's a test. That's what self-control is, that I can be more like Jesus, that I can walk and talk and be like Jesus. It's about the territory of your heart. The enemy knows that, okay, salvation is free. We're not talking about your salvation and where you're, where you're going. I'm talking about your sanctification. I'm talking about growing and maturing in the process of Christ. It is a process, church. I wish to God that he would just come and touch and everything, every fruit of the spirit, every attribute of Christ was there. But it's not. And I'd be setting you up for failure for you to believe that, you know what, once you're saved, everything is fine. Who? Your marriage is going to be fine. Your kids is going to be fine. Everything is going to be fine. Oh, I wish. But it's a process. I can tell you that there's victory in it. I'm going to tell you that there might be some things you have to pray about. There's going to be some things that you have to work out within your own heart. There's going to be some digging that God's going to do in your life. But it's worth it, church. If you look at the One World Trade Center, the height of it is 1,776 feet high, right? Huge, beautiful building. I mean, beautiful, immaculate. However, when the engineers decide that they're going to build one such a wonderful building, they look down at the ground first. They had to see how far down they had to go. They look at the they had to look at the foundation and they had to dig 180 feet down in order for it to be that high. I say that church because in order to go higher in Christ, we have to go lower. If you look at the foundation of the World Trade Center, excuse me, the One World Trade Center, it, it talks about all these different rods they have. It talks about all the different concrete it has. But what they had to dig is they had to dig until they hit a rock. Not only a rock, bedrock. And even when they hit the bedrock, they went down 50 more feet so that it was secure to something that was bigger than the structure. Church, that's what self-control is. When you fasten yourself to something bigger than you, and that is Christ. That is fasting, that is making sure that I am locked into Jesus no matter what. When the doubts come, when the fears come, when the anxiety comes, when the depression comes, I am holding on to Christ and his word. That's self-control. It doesn't matter the winds that comes. It doesn't matter the storms that come. It does not matter what hits my life. I'm secure because I'm fastened to something that is greater than me. And that's Jesus Christ. He will never fail you, church. Trust that. He will never fail you. And that's why the structure is so big. If you look at skyscrapers, they're so big, they're so beautiful, they're, 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 they're large and everything. But if you look at their foundation, if you look at the things that you cannot see, you look at the structure, that's why it can be. Many times, even nowadays, if you look at social media, nothing wrong with social media, pretty good. But if you look at social media, it just takes a, a snippet, right? People want to see the smiles. People want to see the trips and all those, those fun things. But it's just a small snippet of life. And if we're not careful, just like the structures, we just see the beautiful things. We don't see all the time that it took to build the foundation. Church, when you look at people that are successful, that are Christians, if you look at people if, that their, their, their marriages are, are doing great, I bet you they can tell you about all the different struggles. They can tell you about all the things that they had to go through. They can tell you about all the trials and all the tribulations. They can tell you about all the difficulties they had in life because nothing is perfect. I can't tell you how many times being vulnerable, me and my wife, you know, I remember being in Georgia. I remember him before Georgia. It was in Georgia for a while going to church and man we'd have an argument the night before argument the day before let's be let's be real church 
I'm trying to help people out because I'd be a fool to think that it was just, it would just be us. But at least we went to church. We knew where our help came from. We know if we could get there, maybe we hear a word. Maybe then afterwards we can talk about forgiveness. Maybe we, now that we can laugh about those situations, but it was still hurtful, but it was still painful, church. You have to keep going on. The enemy wants to divide us. The enemy wants us to put a wedge between us as Christians and between our marriages and our relationship. That's what he's made to do. That's what he wants to do to each and every single one of us because our walls are down. Because self-control is not is not there. But the Bible says greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. Amen, church. And I've just been talking. I, I, I. Usually I'm a note, right? I got all kinds of notes. I got pages. I got all kinds of things. But I just wanted to have a talk with you all this morning. Is that okay? Can we talk a little bit more? Amen. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 4 and 8, physical training is good, but training for godliness is, is, is much better. It's about growing. It's about maturing. So many oftentimes I, I wish that I could say that, you know, if I'm growth hurts, I like being comfortable. I mean, I, I, I like comfortable. I remember years ago, early in my marriage that, um, you know, we had an apartment and um, we had the furniture this way. And then maybe a month or two later, I'd come home and the wife would change the furniture. And I'm like, what in the world is going on? And then maybe six months, a year later, she might change it up uh, 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 again. I'm one of those people like, I, I just need to warn me or something, right? I need a little bit of a warning or, or, or anything. But when we learned our differences now, I want to just... Things change like, oh, all right, it's that time, it's that season. But it was a process to get to that change, right? And so is the process with self-control. It's a process, church. You're going to face trials. You're going to face tribulations. It does not make you a failure when you miss the mark. It just lets you know that you're going to get back up. It's to let you know that it is a process and I'm going to pray this thing through. I'm not going to give up hope. I'm not going to, I'm not going to give up self-control. I'm going to work out my own salvation. If I'm not loving, God's going to, believe me, God's going to give you opportunities to love. You need to work on forgiveness. God is going to give you opportunities to forgive. You need to work on worry and all these different things. Cast your burden upon the Lord, Right? He's going to give you multiple opportunities to exercise all these different things. So when you miss the mark, you're not failing, church. You're developing. You're, you're, you're growing. And that's what God wants us to do. Grow. We're growing in our assignment. And also, I want to tell this to you all, those that have spouses. Even as you're growing, your spouse is growing also. Be patient with them. Amen. Be loving towards them. All right. Amen. I am going completely off the script, but I love y'all. Can I, can I love on y'all? Can we just talk today? Is that all right? Be patient. Be loving. In this world, in this society where we think that everything is supposed to be picture perfect, we're, I, there is nobody perfect. Only one, right? Even if you look at celebrities, right? The, the, the enemy tries to fool people like, oh, you get this, I don't know, money or this image or whatever. Man, they are depressed and messed up because they still have an emptiness inside of them that can only be fulfilled in Christ. There is nothing that in this world that can satisfy, satisfy them. There is nothing in this world that can satisfy you. And there is nothing in this world that can satisfy me except for Christ. 
And when we understand that, we don't have to look and search for all these different things. We understand that the thing that is we continue to search for is Christ. How can I grow in Christ? How can I mature in Christ? How can I walk and be developed and really be the light that he has called me to be? And church, when we understand that self-control is something that we develop, it is something that we face on every single day. We understand that Paul said it best when he said when he developed self-control, when he developed discipline. First Corinthians 9, 24 through 27, it says, do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So that you, he says, so run so that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we in an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control. Lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. He said it himself that he disciplines his body and he keeps it under control. This was something that Paul said that I have to do. I have to make sure that I stand guard at the door of my own heart. I have to exercise self-control. And when he's talking about boxing, he's talking about himself. He's boxing his own body. He's buffeting himself. I strike blows to myself so that I keep myself under control. When we understand that, we can understand individually in this spiritual war that each and every one of us face, that you have to do this self-control by yourself. He said, I buffet my body. It wasn't Timothy that he said, okay, Timothy, you know what? You do this for me. No. Hey, Peter, you do this for me. No. I buffet my body. I discipline my body. I keep it under control because he knows that his flesh was weak, just like ours is. He understood this. He knows that it was a, a walk and a task that he had to do on a daily basis. Amen. And in closing, as I, as I, as I close and praise and worship team, you can come on, come on up. Some of y'all may be thinking, maybe one person thinks that um, I've had some issues for I had some issues for a long time. You know, I've had some anger problems for a long time. I've been critical or judgmental for a long time. And I would just want to encourage you, don't give up the good fight of faith. Don't grow weary in well-doing. For the Bible says, you shall reap if you faint not. Keep going, church. Keep going. It's the fruit of the fruit of the spirit, self-control. It's a hard one. It's a difficult one. But it's one if you can see what has access to me. What are my temptations? What are those vulnerabilities in my life? And I would say that's the place where you need to grow and develop self-control. Let us pray. Father, we bless you. We magnify you. We thank you for who you are. Father, even as we continue to exercise and grow in self-control, I pray, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit continues to increase so that we may decrease. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen.